So why do bloggers blog? Uh, it depends on the, the demographics of who you're talking to. If you, if you talk to a general audience, uh, it's going to be different than talking to an executive audience, perhaps to a government audience. But uh, what we see is that uh, uh, this was some statistics uh, gathered from a survey by the Pew Center. And you know, what, is, what is the motivation? To express yourself creatively, to document your personal experiences, to stay in touch. All across the board, what motivates people to blog? And what we're finding is that you know, this has been categorized as writing for, in some cases, nano audiences, connecting just with friends and family. And in other cases, as with uh, Bill Marriott's blog uh, and other corporate executives, we're seeing very large audiences. Next slide. And again, subjects that bloggers blog about uh, all across the board, I like the, I like the most popular answer, anything and everything. Next slide. Now, of course, when you, when you conduct research on a subject like this, you come across some oddities. Did you know the president of Iran has a blog? Mr. Ab Abnidjad. Uh, he has a blog. Interesting, the screen capture that I gathered was his Merry Christmas message to us. And, and he, <laughs> there's a sidebar that details about his blog. And he, he says he gets, uh, he, he says he monitors it. You know, he's a busy man, but he monitors it. Uh, and he, he supposedly gets a lot of very positive feedback from his US audience. Mm, OK. Next slide. We've had blogging done from space, OK? Uh, this lady, Anuse Ansari, she's a telecom millionaire from Dallas, a uh, naturalized Iranian, uh, Iranian nationalized U.S. citizen. Uh, she paid her $20 million for the ride on the Russian rocket, and she became the first uh, person to blog from space. And she blogged regularly uh, while she was on her mission. She blogged about her, uh, uh, the cell phone call that re he, she received from her husband. I bet that was roaming. Um, <laughs> even with an iPhone, OK. Um, she also, what was interesting is, and it's some of the negative aspect, and, and I know, you know one of the issues about uh, blogging is about you know, monitoring comments and, and having people register to make comments and so forth. But uh, she, uh, uh, was, uh, she discussed that uh, she actually cried in space reading some of, the, some of the nasty comments that were made on her blog. So, lesson learned. OK, next slide. We also have a phenomenon that's quite, I, th I find quite interesting uh, about sports team owners who blog, like Ted Leonisis here in the local area. Mark Cuban has a blog uh, for the Mavericks. Uh, we also see sports teams doing cooperative blogs like the Phoenix Suns. And now, every athlete apparently is starting a blog. Kurt Schilling has a blog. Uh, uh, the Red Sox fans? OK. OK, it's a bad area. OK. <laughs> uh, Greg Oden, who was the number one choice in the, uh, in the NBA draft last night, has his own blog. And why? It's a way to directly communicate to their fan base. And it's very interesting to bypass the traditional media. Next slide. We see uh, a, a very active uh, environment for blogging in corporate America. And I think one of the things that's going to be talked about with the later speakers today that's, that's discussed in the report is blogging for internal audiences versus blogging for external audiences. What you can do internally within your company by linking people together on the, on the internal blog versus having the, the CEO blog, which is, yes, partially for an internal audience, but more for an external audience, more for uh, communicating and perhaps with a PR uh, or a marketing message as well. Um, certainly, next slide. No better example, and not just because we're in his hotel and, uh, and, 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 and talking about Marriott, but uh, Bill Marriott is to be commended. I know I'm not going to steal the thunder of, of the later presenter, but he's 75 years old, and he's blogging, and he's podcasting. I mean, let's give him a hand. That's uh, uh, to, be, to be commended. Okay. OK. Next slide. Uh, the report that you have in front of you uh, represents a year's work of, uh, of, of myself doing a survey of, and really the first survey that uh, has been done comprehensively on blogging at all levels of government. 
And I know we're in DC, I know we're you know, primarily looking at a federal audience, but uh, this is looking at blogging across the board. From, the, from, blogging at, uh, from blogging congressmen down to blogging mayors and city managers. Next, le next slide. Um, of course, congressional blogs, uh, we identified 17 present and former congresspeople who had, uh, who had started blogs and uh, some who had been voted out or not continuing, of course. But uh, Speaker Pelosi has her own blog, in fairness. Speaker Hastert, when he was speaker up until January, had his own blog as well. Next slide. And we have a comprehensive list of the 17 uh, blogs of members of Congress uh, that are given in the report. And if you go to the center's website, you can click on the report. The links are live. You can go direct to their, to their blogs. And uh, again, I think we, we close this out about April, so uh, I, would, I would dare say we, we've had uh, a few, a few members of Congress hopefully begin, begin blogs uh, since then. Next slide. Uh, and this is very interesting. If you, if for a takeaway in terms of, of how to begin blogging and, and what to focus on, I think this applies to members of Congress. This was uh, suggestions from the Congressional Management Foundation, looking at the four types of blogs that you can, you can do. A travel blog, uh, looking at uh, elected officials' travels, uh, looking at blow-by-blow -blow blogs, looking at uh, pending legislation and opinions on, and stances on those. Uh, the personal blog, uh, in terms of looking at particular issues and events. And then a team blog, where if it's too much uh, responsibility for one, for one member or, or one representative to blog individually to join together. And the Hill is an excellent example of that, uh, where that's done. Uh, and of course, one of the things I did to keep this manageable, because there's going to be a huge emphasis on blogs and every other form of Web 2.0 media with the 2008 election cycle, uh, draw a distinction between, between administrative blogs for the, for the position versus campaign blogs. And now it's very routine for the campaign blogs and, and other sites to be out there. Um, with the Huffington, you know, it, it's interesting because uh, there's a great story about John Kerry posting on the Huffington Post. And the initial reaction was, this isn't John Kerry. And they had to get verification that, yes, this was the John Kerry posting on the Huffington Post. Uh, next slide. Looking at uh, the report spotlights some excellent best practice examples at all levels of government. Uh, surprisingly, you know, I, I found that governors were not well represented. Uh, we, uh, the, what was located was uh, the go Governor Minner of Delaware. Uh, Tennessee Governor Phil Bresden is one of the examples of, of how not to do this because he started uh, his blog, posted about five times, and abandoned it. And so he, you know, that's an example of, and we'll, we'll hear later, you have to have current content for this to work. Next slide. Uh, probably the largest group that was identified was state senators, state legislators. Uh, across the board, um, and, and that number is growing, and both in terms of individual blogs and then blogs. I know in Utah, the, the whole you know, uh, Democratic Legislative Caucus has a joint blog that they can all blog on. Next slide. Dave likes his face. Uh, this is uh, the city manager of Kent, Ohio, Dave Ruller, uh, who has, a, who has a, 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 very, a very good blog. Uh, next slide. Uh, we, have, we have mayors. We have mayors that are blogging not only in the U.S., but we identify bl uh, blogging mayors as far away as Scotland and India that were included in, 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 the, in the report. Uh, the, the blogging mayor of Round Lake is a gentleman by the name of Bill Gentis, and he had a comment that starting the blog was the smartest thing he's ever done. And so I, I, I think we're going to see more and more uh, people in positions react to it uh, in that manner. Next slide. We have uh, identified all the way down to city, uh, uh, covered earlier city manager blogs. We have fire chiefs who are blogging. We have uh, police chiefs who are blogging. The LAPD 
uh, has, a, has a blog. The chief of the Los Angeles Police Department does not himself blog, but uh, has staff that blogs. And there's one writer who uh, was noted for his dragnet style commentary on, on, on the crime that going on in, in Los Angeles. And it, and it draws good readership. Now, Yes, that's perhaps a little inter uh, of entertainment value, but what the chief reported was that the blog was an excellent community relations tool and enabled, uh, was, a, was a channel to establish uh, better connections with the community. So good positive feedback uh, on that. Uh, we don't happen to have any Towson, Towson University graduates, do we? Okay, the pre uh, there's identified about uh, a dozen college and university presidents who, who blog, and this gentleman uh, from Towson in uh, Maryland is one of, the blogger, uh, one of the blogging presidents. So all throughout this, in the public sphere, we see, we see blogging officials at various, at various levels and doing, doing very good work. And the report, we talk about this as being a blogoneer, being some of the first people to, to, to go on and do this. The report has um, uh, an extensive case study on the general and on Stratcom. Next slide. And uh, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to steal the thunder from his presentation. But basically, one of the lines uh, uh, that that I, the, the quotes that I liked, Jonathan used one, but uh, there's one about you know, we've, we in order to 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 fight the global war on terror, we've got to be able to compete. Uh, on an information basis, and I won't use the company. I won't use the company name that he referred to, but uh, but we've got to we've got to we've got to to get information down in the field far better. Um, next slide. And we've you know this this is going to be very interesting to hear from from General Cartwright. The, the survey's second part is, is very good in terms of, I think, providing an overview on the whole uh, blogging issue and dealing with, uh, dealing with blogging from a standpoint of finding best practices for blogging, finding tips on how to engage in blogging, and there's a very good section I'll refer you to in a minute, uh, and also how, some, some mistakes to avoid. Uh, and these come from corporate examples. Uh, one is how not, to, uh, how not to be kryptonite. This is not the Superman kryptonite. This is referring to the kryptonite bicycle locks. Uh, there's been various stories, you know, in the media about, you know, like the, the burning, exploding...